Okay, we're back, and we just um, met up with some horse people. Half horse, half people. And now we're talking to Ubin. Uh, Rook's talking to Ubin. Now that Roetch has had a chance to heal, two of the horseborn are heading south to deliver some supplies to their people. What crazy ideas in your head, Scrivener? With the world falling apart around us, there may not be another chance to trek down south. Listen to yourself. The world is breaking. I don't expect a human to understand, but a viral as old as me has more important goals than just staying alive. What about that competition you viral have for who lives the longest? I've always understood the rules to mean you're actually doing something, not holding up somewhere safe. Besides, my guess is Snorri didn't make it out of Grafheim when the Sunder attack. I might already be the winner. And it sounds like... It doesn't sound like I can change your mind. There's not a rock in the land as hard-headed as me, so don't waste your breath. Then be safe, Ubin, and join us again if you can. You know where we're going. Aww. I like Ubin. Don't worry about me. Just make sure you're alive to see this thing through to Arbarang. Farewell. Scrivener says a few more goodbyes before departing with the horseborn. The governor catches up to you and asks for a moment of your time. His bodyguard is beside him, silent. There's something to be said for you getting us across that chasm and through that bog. Um. Is that a compliment? You just haven't gotten as many people killed as I expected. We give the governor a half smile. You still fail. And I'll be there to push your face in the dung. Is there something you wanted? I want to see these people safely to Arbaran. Get us across these barren plains and I might be impressed. He turns to leave but stops. Oh, and try not to pick up any more strays on the way, okay? Ruga sneers in the direction of the horseborn before walking away. Hey, I, n I don't know if I invited them. They just kind of came along before I even knew what was happening. But I do think having a horse... Horse warriors sounds pretty cool. They sound like they're fairly mobile. A group of two dozen humans, thin and dirty, step off the rough path to let the caravan pass. Please, a young girl says, anything to eat. Her mother, eyes averted, pulls the girl by the arm to silence her. Um, anyway, uh, there's either give them food, why are you out here, you can join us, or look away in shame. So, and if we ask them to join us, then Ruga will be kind of pissed off, right? Might be good to have more clansmen, though. Worried glances are exchanged among the group until a man says, Better than us starving out here on our own. They all agree and thank you, joining the rear of the caravan. See, so yeah, the clansmen forage for food, so that's pretty good. Ahead, the caravan comes to an immediate halt. That's the second feigned shoe this bloody beast has thrown in a day, the yawks tender curses. It will take some time to see to the yawks so you call for a camp. While most of the clansmen sleep or lose themselves in drink, Juno requests a moment to speak with you alone. You are holding things together remarkably well. You sound surprised. When I first looked in your mind at Bjorsgaard, I knew you would do anything to return to Alette. Her death, some of the greatest people in our history have gone mad at the loss of loved ones. You say nothing but continue to look at the Valka. 
You're not insane, Rook. You're experiencing tremendous grief and still managing to lead this caravan. That is something to be proud of. Juno patiently awaits your reply. Uh, why is the caravan why is the caravan important? Anyone here could do what I'm doing. What is your part in all of this? Sometimes I forget to kind of read these out loud to you guys, but uh, you know I'm pretty sure you kind of reading them reading them yourself, I guess, right? Um, anyone here could do what I'm doing. Juno smiles one of sadness and harsh realities. Not anyone, but yes, possibly others. It's why I've been watching you. If you no longer seemed worthy, you would be replaced. Why aren't you leading instead? A Valka's life is one of knowledge and secrets. We help when, when and where we can, but it rarely amounts to trust from others. These clans joined your banner out of hope. They would follow me out of fear. If they end up in Arborang, either way, what's the difference? Who they are when they reach Arborang is exactly why they are important. Fear will soon spread like flames across dry tinder in that town. Without this caravan's hope, all will be consumed and burned to ash. Why is the caravan important? This journey is forging them into what the future will require. The era of peace is over and one of survival has begun. Arborang may be the best shelter for the coming storm, but the people there are soft, too dependent on a society that will no longer exist. Because of the dredge. Partially, but mostly because of a coming darkness that is pushing the dredge. You've mentioned this darkness, but I don't see it. You've seen the signs of its coming, dredge in numbers, the land breaking apart. It is a force unlike any other. I wish I could say more, but even the Mender Council is ignorant to this. What's your part in all this? The Valka grows silent, looking down for a long moment before answering. My role is many names. Instigator, Catalyst, Mistake. But you and I are both fledglings in what is required of us, what we must do. You didn't actually answer me. Because I honestly don't know how. Only the future will tell if my role is villain or hero. Thank you, I should get back to checking on the others. Before you go, there is one thing I must address with you, the serpent. I thought you needed some books in Manahar before knowing anything else to do about it. That is true, but the chasm at Ormsdollar and the tremors in the ground concern me. Yeah, me too. Should that incredible creature ever resurface, do not attempt to stop it. It would take power unseen in ages to affect the serpent. If you see it, run. Her words chill you as you find yourself nodding to her command. Wondering whether I want Ivor or one of these other Varls. Gris or Mogur. Gris has the shield. Mogur. They both have shields. I think Mogur's pretty good. Let's try Mogur. Put Ivor on the bench for a while. Alright. Um, good morale. Let's uh, get out of here. A metal clanking is heard in the distance and grows louder. You see a yox cart surrounded by four varl and an older woman hitting a ladle against a pan. All sorts of things for sale, she says, but her eyes go wide when she looks at you. It's you! Special deals when it comes to you. How do you know me? Word travels fast, she says. Think you can slay asunder and keep it secret. She clicks her tongue and shakes her head. My dear knows of you, sure enough. Alright, let me see what you have. Of course, my dear says, but make up your mind. My dear will be gone as quick as she arrived. And don't get any ideas of sneaking off with things. These four Varl have the keenest eyes, the sharpest blades, and the shortest tempers. You feel the Varl watching your every move. Yeah, I, I actually have no renown, so I can't do shit. Alright.
You notice the archer Nid, because she is standing perfectly still looking out into the distance. Let me guess, you see more grass. When she turns to you, she's not smiling. Dredge, she says quietly. How is that possible, you ask, knowing better than to doubt her sight. I thought we'd lost them at the chasm. You can make out a dust cloud on the horizon, which means they can make out the one produced by the caravan, and it's heading the same direction as you, toward Lundar. The Valka walks to your side and says, I was afraid of this, the cracks in the ground along the Eastway Road. It's like that damn crevice at Sigurdholm all over, Hakon says. The dredge, we're just pouring out of it. Does that mean they could... Juno finishes your question. Appear almost anywhere. Yes, but let's not panic the caravan. Just keep moving. Lundar, the archer's haven, home to the finest Fletchers in the world, though it appears beset with war. Looks like the dredge are heading this town too. Sow sweat. This is bad, Hakon says. Lundar's fighting on two fronts and barely holding it together. Hakon's been warring long before you were ever born. His worried look is unsettling. I always heard the horseborn had trouble with walls since they usually fight in open fields, he says. Ubin's the only one old enough to actually know, but it doesn't really matter because those walls will barely slow the dredge. And if those dredge flatten this town, we're defenseless on the, out on those plains, Ivor says. But what are the horse born after? All eyes turn to Roek, Deirdre, and Skatchak. The three horse born in your caravan are pointing and talking excitedly in their own language. Deirdre nods toward Roech, tossing her head and baring her teeth. You are surprised by the look of savage fury on their faces as the couple takes off without warning, charging the attacking horseborn. While Skechath remains behind, he clearly wants to join them, but he waits your decision. They could die on their own, Oddleaf shouts, not hesitating to follow Roech and Deirdre. Iber sighs. She's lost her mind over those new members of the clan. Might lose her life for it, too. He looks at you. We could fight Dredge or Horseborn or split up and fight both if you're feeling suicidal. If we're splitting up my Varl or hitting the Dredge, Hakon says, we're good at that. Ingbar can do what he wants, he always has. Yeah, let's split up. The governor steps forward. We're dividing our forces, are you really that foolish? I am that foolish. The Varl follows Hakon through a breach in the city's walls while the rest of your fighters and clansmen follow you into the fields. Oddleaf is hemmed in near two horseborn. You assume are Roek and Derdriu, but the kicked up dust cloud blurs your sight. We can drive a wedge straight for her, Ivor says, but these horseborn are fast. If they flank us, we'll take heavy losses. Um, let's do a shield wall. Advance slowly and keep them from flanking us. Exactly how I would do it, Ruga says. No sense in risking everyone for a few who are foolish enough to blindly end this fight. Your army advances against the unknown tactics of the enemy horseborn. Dun dun dun! Dun 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 dun! Um, Eric can call horses, which is good. We need Nid in the battle. Um, Ivor. Fuck yeah. Team Ivor. Uh, then we got Avid, the useless slut. Um, we got another archer if we take Irsa. I think that sounds pretty good.
Okay, that's not bad. Um, let's get a little bit more mobility here. And maybe, maybe we'll wait for them to come to us. Let's do it. Wait, why is she way over there? Did I fail to move her properly? Oh, look at them get in position. Do this. Oh, these guys are pretty fucking wimpy. I gotta give them that. More coming, keep them away from the town. Okay, they got reinforcements, that's why they're such fucking wimps. turn is it? Oh, his still? Okay. Oh, he can move away after that. I see. Thank you. 
Google, I think, isn't doing the greatest job. If we defeat enough, the rest will retreat. Sounds like a good plan. They look pretty routed to me. Yeah, the bear's fine. This should be the last one. Let's finish this. Oh, there's another one. And another one.
<laughs> Look at this fucking dude. It's hilarious. You're dead. All right, well, I think that's a good time to stop it, and uh, we'll do the other battle in the next episode. <laughs>